So I get to talk about the actual hardware, right? So the hardware that goes into these visual collaboration spaces. And I refer to the various options that are out there in the marketplace as the spectrum of, wire, of, of visual collaboration technology. So uh, I'm going to be kind of walking you through uh, what some various options are. I'm going to start at the very low end of the really inexpensive options that you've probably heard of. Some of them are even consumer grade and kind of walk through uh, all the way the more full featured, um, even the immersive room type options that are out there. So I'm going to start off with uh, something you've probably seen before is the Chromecast. This is what I consider, you know, the pretty much the least expensive option out there. It's $35, allows you to wirelessly transmit from your computer. Um, it's really designed for uh, broadcasting a web page up there. If that's the only need you have, that might make sense. It's an HDMI port, plugs directly into your, your computer, and it uses Wi-Fi and your network. A slight step up from that uh, would be, uh, you've probably seen these, it's the Apple TV. Um, there's actually a few varieties of this. There's the more traditional um, one that's uh, smaller, a little smaller than this one. This is the new fourth gen. The third generation one um, is a little more set up for a boardroom environment. It has a, a conference room mode where when you turn on conference room mode, it, it just shows a static image all the time that tells you what wireless network to connect to and which air playable device to, to stream to. If you're not familiar with AirPlay, it's the built-in technology uh, in Apple products really uh, for wireless presentation. Uh, if your office or your environment is filled with Apple products, then you know maybe this makes sense, maybe it doesn't. Uh, if you have a lot of Windows machines, there are third-party software you can load to make this work, but there's probably more elegant solutions out there uh, that I'll show you here in a second. Uh, kind of a step up from that, you may have heard of Crestron. They, they make a product called Air Media, which uh, does require an app or a piece of software to run on your computer to transmit wirelessly. Uh, but it kind of enhances things a little bit because it allows you to have multiple things on the screen at one time. You can have you know, a room full of you know, 30 people all have the software, but then four of them can actually show uh, a, a piece of uh, information at the same time. So this is where you start getting into more of a collaborative environment where you might have an engineer showing CAD drawings, you might have a, a project manager showing timelines and, and due dates and a salesperson with other information all kind of sending information up there at the same time. Uh, another option that's uh, kind of similar but um, it's a little bit uh, what I would consider uh, more of like an easy button, right? So this is the Barco ClickShare. You may have seen this. Uh, I think it's in one of the booths. It's an actual USB uh, dongle that you plug into your computer. It has a small button on it. Uh, you press the button and it transmits whatever's on your screen up to this screen and you can do, again, up to four things at once. Very easy to use with, um, you know, a slight drawback would be that uh, the frame rate on something like this isn't like full video frame rate. The, the resolution's high, so you can do Excel spreadsheets, things like that, but full motion video uh, isn't going to look quite as good. Uh, another, another one that this is uh, both, they offer both software and hardware. You might have heard, I don't know if you've heard of Immersive, but uh, Immersive does um, kind of a multi-user collaboration environment, right? So you can have uh, multiple people sending uh, different pieces of content up to the screen. It's a little bit limited to, uh, compared to some of the other things I'm going to talk about. It doesn't do things like annotation. Um, it's really just designed to present your, your stuff wirelessly. They have apps you can use. It actually natively supports AirPlay, um, which is uh, kind of nice. Uh, so you can just send your, your iPhone or your iPad up there natively. Um, it's, uh, it's not really designed for large-scale video walls. People have made it work for that. Um, but uh, it's, it's more designed for you know, maybe two displays, one display, something like that. Uh, then you get into like the Christie Brio, uh, that's uh, actually um, over, uh, you might have seen it here. Uh, this is a little bit more of a step up, it's a little more of a, a hardware appliance that's designed for, uh, you know, allowing five people or so to transmit uh, their content up there. And this adds the ability for actual annotation. So the screens themselves can be touched, you can walk up to them, annotate on the content, you can manage everything through a web portal. Um, so it's easy back-end user management if they want to decide what's up there, what's not from an administrative standpoint. Uh, pretty powerful product. 
Uh, another one is the uh, Kramer Via, which is on display right over back here. This this is a pretty cool product. It has a lot of features. Um, it allows you to do single or dual screen. You can uh, you can annotate on the content. You can have up to six people if you're doing dual screen, up to twelve people, six on each screen, presenting their content wirelessly. Uh, you can interact with that content from your computer, uh, from your mobile device, or go up to the screen if it's a touch screen, uh, annotate right on it. Uh, you can even take what's on the screen and send it back to the device. So if there's people sitting in the back of the room that's watching a presentation, uh, they can just load the app and choose to view whatever's happening on their, their tablet so they're not looking at a screen that's real far away. Um, as well as a whole suite of other features as far as cloud sharing and file, you know, after you annotate on something, you can shoot that file out to everybody in the audience. Um, pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Uh, another one, um, this is kind of a category of what I would call like built-in uh, collaboration devices. You know, you've probably heard of like the Microsoft Surface Hub that's kind of getting a lot of buzz right now. This is actually the new line TrueTouch, which is actually right back over here. Uh, similar product to the Hub, they're both, uh, they have like PCs built into them. This particular one has both Windows and Android built in, um, as well as a capacitive touch uh, screen. And if you don't know what different technologies are as far as touch goes, capacitive is really the best kind of touch there is. It's, it's what you have on your iPhone and your, your iPad as opposed to an infrared bezel that's around of the, a lot of the lesser expensive uh, devices. And the infrared, um, you know, sunlight coming in your window can interrupt the touch and um, it's not really that accurate. Whereas capacitive touch is, is super accurate and um, really responsive. So it's a really good touch technology. Uh, this display has two cameras in it, so you've got your, your top camera and your bottom camera. On the Microsoft one, it puts the cameras on each side. Um, and then uh, it has all the software built in, so you don't need to bring a PC. Uh, you can just, you can annotate on whatever you're looking at. You can save it. Um, you can save your sessions. Um, extremely easy to use. If you haven't played with this particular product, I'd recommend going, going over to New Line over there and, and checking this thing out. Um, and then uh, the last one I wanted to touch on real quick is actually uh, uh, the Prism Synthesis product, which you may have seen uh, right over here. And so this is what I would consider, I mean, you can actually put this in a lot of different environments. You can put it on a single screen like we have here. You can put it on a large video wall, which we call, we kind of refer that, to that as like a large immersive room where the entire wall technically could be a video display, an interactive video display. And uh, this kind of takes it to the next level where you can have you know, the whole room sharing content, annotating on that content, walk up, multi-touch, resizing the elements on the screen, um, tying correlations between elements. So you might have a video and you might uh, have a visual, uh, an, an audible note that you want to associate with that, vis uh, that visual and you tie those together with your finger and those, those elements stay together. Um, some of the latest versions incorporate things like Skype for Business directly into the, into the software. So it's kind of eliminating the need to put an expensive, you know, Cisco video conferencing codec connected to that. And there's additional features, you know, like HTML5 browsers and things like that being built into it. So um, it's a pretty cool product. And, and, it, and like I said, it spans kind of the, the smaller screen up to the, the larger screens. And, um, you know, the one thing I wanted to touch on that's kind of related to this um, is where things are kind of going. And so I wanted to show you a quick video of, um, and it kind of relates to this, uh, the, the Prism product because this video was a, a video that a large pharmaceutical company in town came to us uh, several years ago and said, hey, we saw this video and it was basically like this future technology and I'll show it to you in a minute. And we wanna, we wanna do that. Well, that technology wasn't available yet. So um, what we did is we, we worked with uh, Prism Anacor at the time and kind of came up with uh, some, uh, a framework of what that would look like. And I think it's kind of interesting because when you go back and you look at this video, which was actually, I don't know, seven or eight years ago now, it's actually a good glimpse of, I think, where we're still heading into the future because uh, the technology they're using is like uh, transparent glass and, um, and gesture control and those sorts of things. So it's about a minute long. I'm gonna, hopefully we'll get audio. Let me see if I got my, my speakers up here. Yeah, I'm not going to get audio, but that's okay. We can do this. 
Okay. Hopefully it didn't pop. We're going to do a short tour of Europe. Can you confirm Berlin? We need to check on Munich, Paris, London, and Manchester. This looks really good. Do you think we'll have the EPK ready by noon? That shouldn't be a problem at all. Thank you so much. Sayonara. Sayonara. I've tried everything. You just won't do it. I'm so sorry. We're live in one minute. Sorry, Mark. I won't do it. Just kidding, man. Happy birthday. Enjoy the show. Guys, ready for some rock? So that... That was obviously Tamburg before they got uh, acquired by Cisco, but uh, that kind of gives you an idea of you know some uh, visionary ideas of where things were going several years ago. And I think we're still heading there. You know, I don't know if you guys sat through the presentation by Planar, but you know these translucent uh, you know displays are actually a thing. You know, these things are are starting to be sold uh, and they're they're being produced. Uh, the the transparent OLED displays. So. Uh, pretty exciting times. Um, if you do have any questions, I'm going to go back to the chit chat. Is that what we're calling it? Yeah. All right, chit chat area. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions on that.